there's a little town called Krugerville. It's only got 903 people. Its mayor has an office and has keys to everything and can get to all the records. Why can't Argyle with 3,200 3, people not be able to get to records? I want to know what's going on. As a future taxpayer, I want me and my kids and my great grandkids to not have to pay off stuff that is going on while I have no reason to say it. Start letting these people in this room right here have something to say about your, what y'all are doing. I bet everything that I've done, I'm only 15, and you can ask anyone in this town that I'm a good kid and that I will speak for, for what's right. And another thing, what is with having a camera face just on the mayor? I understand having to need a record, but why just of him? Why not the whole council? Thank you. My name is Craig Thurston. I live at 402 on Justin Road. Um, I'd like to agree with Mr. Norman and Mr. Mink. I think they hit it right on the head. Um, last time I addressed council, and I told y'all that my expectations were as you work together. Those are still my expectations. Whatever the problems are, we need to put them aside because we represent these people, the citizens, the voters, and you need to conduct yourselves that way. Okay? Forget the, the power plays, the cameras, all the other childish stuff. Okay? Get together, work together for the citizens of our house. Here I am again. Out of 3,000 or so people in Argyle, there's 2,500 registered voters. Less than 500 voters voted for this election. How appalling do you think that is? Very. When people can't get off their butts to come in here and vote for who they want in this office. As far as integrity, I said it. As far as just a butt, I said it. Can I get your name? My name is Patrick Phelps. I grew up at 1008 East Harpo Road for your current years. address. Please. My current address is 210 Will Street. Sorry for getting a little emotional. Matt has says he knows me. I don't know him. I'm, for life of me, I don't know him. I did, I'm not even a registered voter here yet because I've been living in Rockwell. I've moved here. I want to stay here. My father did a lot of things here in this town. Are y'all going to call him crooked? I met Don Shrecky about a year and a half ago. My first impression was very generous, very helpful, very guiding, and a good friend. I respect my father very, very much. He is my friend. And if I could have got him here, he'd have been here. Mr. Smith, rules have been in place for years, not just in the past couple of years. Anybody who comes into this office knows that they have these rules. They're in the ordinance. If they tell you that they have to keep me to get public records, you go for a request and you ask for it. It's not hidden. The records are there. If there's anything to see, you'll find it. If there's anything you want to find out, they'll tell you. It's called a request. I have to do it. All these people have to do it. These people have to do it. What I said last week, I probably did a little rash. I probably uh, kept myself from saying a few cuss words. I meant it. If you want to come into this office and come in here and state what you want to state and do what you want to do, that means you have to get along with these people. Don't barge into somebody's office and cuss them out. You work together. That's how my father did it. He may have been a hellraiser, but he sat there up in that, in that <clears throat> podium right there, and he either didn't agree or disagree. He didn't cuss them out. <clears throat> mm. 
Anyway, let me calm down. I'm a hard worker. I'm sure everybody else is here too, or has worked hard in their life. I want this town to succeed. If it has to succeed, it will. You got people up there who do know what they're doing. They're not corrupted. If they weren't up there doing what they were doing, we'd have them out of there. We'd vote them out. But people got to come in and talk. That's just the bottom line. Thank you. Five hundred people. That's that's real. My name is Newt Newman. I live at 845 East FM 407. Been here since 99. I'm obviously one of the ones at this point may be disfranchised because I'm not an old time Argyle citizen. Man, what I heard is we won't do citizens, and the exact word after that was but. The new citizens also deserve a voice. The council that we have is to represent all of us. Mr. Smith won the election. Elections have consequences. I didn't vote for Mr. Smith, but he did win the election. The reason I didn't vote for him had more to do with his background and the fact that as in a position like that, I want someone that I can look up to that doesn't have automatic things that are going to be brought out. I wish Mr. Smith didn't have those things. I wish that Mr. Smith, you know, had a candidate, y'all had a candidate that didn't have those things because I think that's going to lend its own problems as we go forward. And it certainly has because it's been brought up by both, well, excuse me, by the side of the voting plan. And what I ask for is let the representatives that we voted for do their job. Mr. Smith certainly has every right to be in the position that he's in because he won. And there's going to be consequences because of that. However, it's going to be important that he work with the council that we have. And as just said a minute ago, work with the systems that are in place now. And it's also important that people that voted for Mr. Smith understand that from the other side, there's going to be moves politically appropriate, governmentally appropriate, that need, need be adhered to. If, they, if somebody wants to put another position out, they feel like Mr. Smith is overstepping his bound. There has to be a voice for that. And what I'm hearing is that personal attacks to the council. You know, if you're not on their side, you know, if, if you're not on their side, personal attacks, and I think it's inappropriate. I mean, I really think it's inappropriate. And the thing I would ask is civility up here has to start out here. That's my view of it. And we have to be courteous to each other. Y'all being nice to me, listening to me. And I appreciate it. And that's really all I have to say. Just, you know, let's work within the rules here. And these folks need to work within the rules.
it's simple. I want y'all to work with him and him to work with you. And if you don't like what's going on, then get out and let somebody else can work with you. Some bad. I was voted every time there was an election. And I've seen many, many different actions from our city councils over the years. Some were pleasing and some not so pleasing. One of the few that I have had to do uh, personally was uh, with one of the council members years ago in which my husband and I were trying to cooperate with uh, some easements that the city would needed to have. And uh, before we even could barely sit at the table, we were threatened with eminent domain right away. And for a person like me who I think I have a pretty good record for co cooperation, with my people. I spent a lot of years in the nursing profession. You have to cooperate for sure on that. So I think, like from the movie Cool Hand Luke here, we've got a real big problem. Cooperation and communication. <laughs> and I know for sure that there's smart enough people sitting up there and, and out here that sure we can solve it with some civility, as the other gentleman said. It would sure please my old heart to see it. I would like to end by saying I, for the future of Argyle, have some things that I would like to state right now. I would hope <coughs> that you would take into consideration that we would like, I know I'm not alone in this, in the citizens for me, to let's not cover this place up with concrete. If we're going to put any big box stores in and things like this, let's do it over on 35. And we also don't want to cover up the little pockets that are left in this beautiful place with little generic homes. And I might add homes that don't do a thing but create problems for traffic, which we don't have the money to fix. It seems like over the last few years, a lot of money's been spent. We've been put in debt quite a bit. If I had had to run my financial life that way over the years, I would be in the poorhouse if they still had one of those, which I bet they don't. So, cooperation, please. And civility, please. And don't forget to stick your hand out and say hello. Look your people in the eye and ask the citizen, what would you like? What can we do for you? We are your servants.
but I don't really see him here. <laughs> because he only deals with what's not in his own backyard. I've told him that before. We have no control over that. But I feel we have control over it here because point blank, I've always told my husband, I feel all politicians are crooked. <laughs> but I can tell you one thing, that that man sitting right there is not. And if any of you guys can say that I never had a drink, never smoked a cigarette, you'd be lying to yourself and us. Because you know what? I'm not perfect either. But even my brother the other day couldn't believe I've never had a speaking to i I've never had a ticket. And today I'm 48 years old. And only, and I told Matt this yesterday, that a 48-year-old sort of crippled up woman because I do physical labor, or I did, now I'm on disability because of it. Um, and I grew out here, or I moved out here because it was a town that was for the people. It didn't matter what home you lived in, how big it was, where it was, what clothes you wore, what car you drove. Like I told from lightly, it's not the house that makes the home the people in it. And I would like this place to be a home for the citizens of Argyle. And you guys are here to work for the citizens of Argyle. And yeah, I don't, you know, this is me, I'm hungry, you know. And that's what got me uh, where I'm at today, you know, back problems and everything else. But I can look back and tell my children I worked hard and I earned everything. And I earned it legally. And nobody can, you know, find anything different about me. Well, I made childhood things, but anything different than that, or you or anybody. So please give this man a chance, because there's no other, there's nobody else in this audience that can say that their family roots go back and never got what he can. His grandfather sitting right here, born and raised in the house Matt lives in now. And I know Matt will do what does for our guy. Like 85 seconds. Matt was up front with his record from the beginning. He and I had a long discussion about it, and I voted for, for him anyway. <laughs> Anyone else wish to speak? Good. Okay, this time I'd like to ask the uh, council persons if they would like to speak. Yes, I'd like to speak. I'm just I'm opening up the meeting. Are you serious? I'm I have a serious. statement that I would like to read, and I'm trying. You'll have your chance. I'm okay. not asking for a chance. I refer to Councilman Haynes. Thank you. I appreciate everyone taking their time, their valuable time, to come here today. And I mean everyone. I know this is a regular scheduled meeting. I want to make sure everybody can hear me. But this is the only time in the 72-hour notice period required by law that we were all available and that our town attorney was available. And keep in mind that he has other cities to work for as well, so he's in meetings every day. The mayor of Argyle, a mayor of a general law city, has certain authorities granted by state law and by ordinances put in place by various councils over many years in this set, starting with the Von Jenkins or before. Matt Smith has recently won the election and has been elected mayor by 253 of our 3,300 citizens and I respect the democratic process. But that is not what this discussion is about today. It is not at all about who won or lost the election. This discussion is about bullying, intimidation, and threats. And this discussion is about how we are going to conduct ourselves in accordance with the rules of this council, state law, and common decency and courtesy to our staff. We did not elect a dictator. You've been elected mayor of a type A general law city, and we, when we the council fully expect you to understand your roles, responsibilities, duties, and limitations as mayor, and also want you and the public to understand what you are allowed to do by law and what you are not allowed to do by law. 
By the end of this meeting, my hope is that we will all understand your authority and that there is a process for everything that we do and that the council as a whole gives the policy and direction of the town, not any one of us individually. We fully expect the mayor to adhere to those policies. We will not tolerate disruptive behavior, threats, humiliation, and bullying of this council or our extremely talented and overly qualified town staff. We will not tolerate any conduct that adversely affects or impacts the community's confidence in the ability of our town to provide essential services. The town staff deserves to be treated with courtesy, respect, and dignity. They don't take orders from any one individual sitting on this council. They take direction from all of us as a collective body. We do not always agree on the vote, and I can assure you with this current council there were many times that we haven't agreed. But we have always agreed on the process of how we get there, the process by which we all operate. You have the exact same access to information and public records and to City Hall that any other elected official has, including me and everyone on this council and everyone who has served before us. Nobody has denied you information, but you do not have the authority to shut down Town Hall with your disruptive behavior and overburden the employees with your exorbitant demands for information to be provided at a moment's notice. You have essentially stopped the staff from working on next year's budget because they are trying desperately to comply with your unreasonable request for immediate, I mean, this is your request from last week. And they got it to you, but you wanted it right away. Right in front of you. Oh, okay, I'll give you It's everybody has a copy. So that's the kind of Wait, hang on, I'm not done. I'm not done, Joy, please. Okay. Thank you for deferring to me in the first place. Um, you are entitled. You are entitled to public records. But your request, which essentially takes down a small forest, will take some time to gather, and they've obviously done it before I even finished preparing this statement. You're going to have to wait a reasonable amount of time for them to comply with your request, which I'm sure will have more forthcoming, as these are very hardworking people and they have a town to run and citizens to attend to. You're not entitled to get them any quicker through scare tactics, threats, or intimidation. We all have to go through a process to get public records. There has never been a problem with asking nicely for anything from town staff prior to this time, and they have always complied with everyone's request to my knowledge. We are all public servants, but no one should be treated like slaves. To this point, you have not been denied access to any part of town buildings during business hours. Elected officials, like any other member of the public, may have access to town hall or any other town facility during normal business hours, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., except for those times when, a duly called meetings, when duly called meetings are being held in these buildings. For security and protection of our town assets, security codes and key access to any part of the building has only been given to those employees having a justified need for access to the building. Town council members and the mayor have never been issued a key to any part of the building or issued security access codes or alarm codes, except maybe a long, a long time ago. For many reasons, no mayor or council member is entitled to a key to the building or 24 seven access to the building or a computer connected to the town server or our own private office in the building. There is a council member office in the foyer right over there, and that office was constructed specifically for the purpose, for that purpose during the renovation of this building. You are not entitled to your own office, and you are certainly not going to tell Mr. Drescher that you're going to take his office in town hall and that he can just as easily work in a cubicle. You have no authority to do that. Lyle Drescher is a man of the highest integrity and character and has more knowledge and experience running a city than all of the people in this room put together. And as much as the people on this council have disagreed with each other, last year we unanimously passed Ordinance 2010-17 because we all agreed on one thing. And I can assure you that our staff agrees. Lyle Drescher is the best thing that ever happened to the town of Argyle. This ordinance is This ordinance gives the town manager the duty of chief administrative officer of the town, and he is responsible to the entire council for the proper management and administration of all the affairs of the town, and he has done an outstanding job. We as a voting body felt Mr. Drescher was so qualified to do this job that we gave him authority to conduct business as a town manager instead of a town administrator. 
I want the town staff to know that they are strongly and fully supported and empowered not only by me and this entire council to do their jobs, but by the citizens of the town and hopefully by the new mayor. If not, I want you all to know that you have my utmost respect, admiration, and appreciation and full support. I trust you all to carry out the town's business as is expected by our citizens. And I thank you all for the time you've given me. May God bless Argyle and God bless Texas. Came here. The reason I came to our 